Hi, welcome to What's in the Box with Parrish Rigby for episode eight. Today we're going to talk about this, what I call a semi-organized crime ring. This is a crime ring for sure, and I'm not sure that all the participants even know about the other, um, I guess, minions, camaraderies, whatever you want to call it within the, the organization. Today we're going to talk about how this semi-organized crime ring, they use tactics such as psychological warfare, such as billing fraud, such as financial fraud, as we've already spoken about. They signed, they also did things as far as like car tampering, which would be psychological warfare. They did many things as far as, and especially when it came to in-person and online. When it came to online, there are some major companies, such as TXU, as we're going to talk about today, that were victims of this situation. And I say a victim only because there's an employee that I know, I feel for certain is involved. However, I don't believe that TXU as a whole and as the, the, the main president actually understands or knows what was going on, but I'm going to explain to you and maybe you'll look at your bills as well. Today we're going to talk about TXU, Thermoserve, John Wally Price, um, Angel Reyes, his law firm, as well as some other people that are tied to this in the U.S. Stock Exchange. So let's, let me begin. In 2014, well, I had been a TXU customer for many years prior, since 2007. My bills were a little crazy, but I just didn't really focus that much on them. However, when I rolled around to 2014, I noticed that everything went skyrocketing. I lived in an apartment and it was 1400 Highline. Now it's called Amley Design District. I personally call it Guantanamo Bay, Getmo. You'll learn why. But however, in that time, I moved into that apartment on a Sunday, the 24th, the sun, on a Sunday prior to, uh, in the middle of August. However, when I actually got my welcome letter, my welcome letter says that I came to that um, apartment many days prior to me even signing up with TXU once I got to, to, to Emily or Fortune Art Highline. Almost immediately, I started noticing that my 800 and something square foot apartment, my bills were double and triple what everybody else's was with the same square footage. They also had TXU. I pretty much coined this up as the term billing fraud. Not knowing what was happening and just paying the bills, my bills would go anywhere from two to three to four to five hundred dollars a month. And trust me, the AC did not work most of the time, so there's no way, even if I had it on the lowest degree possible, would I ever have had a bills that high. Even John, one of the maintenance men at 1400 Highline, and then when it transferred to Emily Design District, said to me at one point, your bill is reading two to three times higher than everybody else's, than the average. Well, during the time that I was at Emily Design District, I was able to determine a couple of items that I felt like were billing fraud. First off, there was one time when I was able to determine there were three meters on my bill that it actually came from. That was only one time. I was able to determine that on somebody else as another victim of the situation. Her name is Michelle. Not only not her bill from Amley Design District or Fortune Air Highline, but her bill from the Las Cleanest Association where she was had a home that she was selling while she lived at Highline. Um, my I was triple and quadruple the kilowatts on my bills. The invoice numbering was completely not in sync. It is my understanding, being a former entrepreneur and from all the companies that I've worked with, that we use invoicing as a way to keep track of the bills so we know what has been paid and what hasn't been paid in the sequential order. The sequential order of the um, invoices for TXU were completely out of sync. From I can say from 2014 all the way till I left in 2017, not only for my account but for Michelle's as well. And to me, that seems like a red flag, but may not be something. But when you learn more about what happened at TXU, it may make you want to think twice. So often, my bills were so incredible. As I said, they ranged anywhere from two to three to four hundred, five hundred dollars sometimes a month. So I started waiting to get the little late slip for my account. The little late slip that says it's a red piece of paper that you get in the mail because I had everything paper. And the reason I waited for that was because the late, the late slip that I would get would always be less than the original invoice amount. So it was hard for me to determine every month whether I'm going to pay the regular amount on the invoice or am I going to pay the late amount. 
This happened consistently from about 2014 to 2017. It was a joke. It was an absolute joke. So sometimes when I would pay the late amount, then TXU would acknowledge that and would say, okay, great. When I would pay the regular amount, the non-late amount, which is a little bit more, then it was about 5%, 5% more than the regular amount, then TXU would go, great. And it was very odd to me, but at that time, I was just taking it all in. Because as you will learn later on, I was really sick. I had arsenic poisoning. I had a lot going on. And I was being traumatized. I was about, by 2014, I was about three years into what has now become a 12-year ordeal. Also, I moved in to Highline on, May for, on August 14th. I believe it was August 14th. Something around there, I'll have to get the exact date of 2014. My first bill from TXU at Highline, 1400 Highline, was for, let's see what it says here. It says it's for $275.29. Seems like a lot. Well, let me tell you this. What's interesting is it says that the previous month, the previous, I had a outgoing check pay. And my outgoing check pay for August 11th of 2014 was for $164.41. Well, I can tell you something. That not only in 2014 by August, I did not have a bank account at all. Because I had to close my bank accounts in about March or April of 2014 because of all the financial fraud and money laundering that was going on and nobody would help. Between Frost Bank at that time and PayPal. So not only did I not make that payment, also, I in March maybe April of 2014, I was told by a PI that we hired that I had 45 minutes to move out of my previous home, which was 2820 McKinnon, Dallas, Texas, 75207. So at that time, I wasn't, I, so, not only, so I moved to my parents' house to try to figure out where I was going to move. Because at that time, the death threats were increasing. The people coming in my home using bump keys was increasing. I really thought that I could go to my parents' house for a few months, figure out a supposedly safe place to live, 1400 Highline, and then it all would be okay. Little did I know, I was in store for much, much more. Much more retaliation against me. So not only is why I find it comical that an outgoing check was paid on August 11, 2014 on, on the account with my name on it, it couldn't have happened because that account, I was not even, I was living at my parents' house. Like, so there's, there's no way, and I didn't have a bank account. So that to me is a red flag. Um... Let's see here. So I talked about, okay, so then we're going to talk about, we're gonna, I may move around here on this billing situation. Um, but in 2000, by the time we get to 2015, on December 29th of 2015, again, John made, made mention to me that my electric bill was three to four times higher kilowatt wise than everybody else. And he had worked in that building prior to me arriving in August of 2014. And like I said earlier, my friends, Susan Birch, Dalen, Wal Dalen Walton, Jasmine, who's now deceased, and a bunch of other people that I knew in the building, they even had, some of them had it, my square footage or much greater, and their bills through TXU were nothing compared to mine. So on 12 29 of 2015, after carefully examining the bills, I tried to create a TXU online account. And I was sent a mysterious account and I, there, so I tried to create an online account. I was trying to, at this by December 29th of 2015, I was trying really hard to keep up with and make my own spreadsheets with pencil, because I couldn't put anything on computer, of what was happening. Why were my bills so out of control? And at that time, I had never created an online account, because if you remember, I had so much financial fraud. I had so much going on that I couldn't, identity theft and everything was happening with all these accounts, that I couldn't do anything. There was nothing that I could possibly do. So I'd, I'd never created an online bank account with TXU, even at 2820 McKinnon, ever. I mean, that's just something I just didn't even do prior to being gang stalked and targeted. But a mysterious screen popped up that day, and it says that there was already an account in my name. At that time, my billing address reversed back to, and I don't know how this happened originally, it happened sometime when my stocking first started from 2011 to 2014. The address in which the service was was 2820 McKinnon, um, Dallas, Texas, it was apartment 2022, and then it reversed back to the billing address and the bills going to my parents' address, which I had never done that. And you will learn through other billing fraud and manipulation, and I would say online hacking and account tampering, that that happened quite a bit, but I didn't do that. Then, 
when we, so then by the time I opened up the account in 2014 and I called them to get service at Amway Design or 1400 Highline, number 916, Dallas, Texas, 75207. By the time I did that, I made sure this time that the actual bill was 1400 Highline and that the billing address was 1400 Highline and it was my name. But it mysteriously changed along the way to my parents' address once again. And I couldn't create that online profile. There were weird things such as in June of 2015, the invoice was due, the bill was due on 7-13-2015. The invoice was paid on 7-16 of 2015. But because I paid it three days late, which if you get those late bills in the mail, you know that they don't add a disconnect fee until they actually disconnect it, which is past the red bill. But oh, not Paris Rigby. I got a $9.95 July invoice saying that, oh, by the way, I had my, my electricity disconnected, which was absolutely incorrect. So you don't get a disconnect fee until you don't pay it past the red slip. But by this time, again, I was catching on and I was waiting for the red slip. That would be another discrepancy. Um, so on July of 2015, the invoice for 8 18 2015, which were represented the July invoice, I paid it four days late, which means it was prior, like, so when you get that red slip saying it's a late fee, then it was actually before the late, before I actually got that and it said the disconnection rate, but I was still charged a $9.95 disconnect fee, but it was never disconnected. Um, in August of 2015, I paid, the invoice was due on 9-14-2015 because I was tired of getting the disconnect fees of $9.95, which I know it's only $9.95, but at the end of the day, it's called principal. And because my bills were so out of control, I went in and I said, so I ended up paying the real, the invoice fee, not the late fee. If I would have waited for the late fee prior to the disconnect notice, then it would have been less. However, I was still charged, even though I paid it one day late on, I paid the bill on nine, the bill is due, the invoice said due date 9-14 of 2015, and I went and paid that amount on 9-15-2015. I was still charged a $9.95 disconnect fee, but it was never disconnected. October of 2015, the invoice was due on 11-12 of 2015. The invoice was paid five days later, which again, if you get that red invoice in the mail, the one that says that you're going to have a late, you know, the one that says late payment, which would have been less, then I would, it would have still been not disconnected. But again, I was charged $9.95 for a disconnect fee that didn't happen. So. Just to give you another couple of examples, on January 16th of 2015, the original invoice amount, which was dated 12-29-2015, was $272.82. The disconnect amount, which that little red late slip, was $266.72. On January 28th of 2016, the invoice amount is $253.39. The now this one is actually what I what I'd consider correct. The uh, disconnect notice says two hundred sixty six dollars and sixty two cents, so it's actually giving me it's a higher price, which that's the way that I've always seen it to be. So that one probably was correct. Like I stated, um, Michelle, who I won't say her last name because she actually went into hiding in two thousand and seventeen because of the severity of this situation. I do not want to give away her last name, but she had billing fraud for TXU that we found for her home in Las Colinas. As you will learn later on this podcast, there was a phone number that dialed Michelle's phone in 2016. From that phone number, I was able to, to determine an IP address. I was able to go down the line and it dealt with a check fraud scheme, one of the three check fraud schemes we uncovered. It also dealt with um, the Las Colinas Association. It dealt with point to point security. It dealt with um, a whole range of like people that were involved, or companies that were involved, and all the way down to the Department of Justice and her driver's license that she had renewed in 2016. And that will be in the next episode. So we're going to go on to the next thing. In 2016, after discovering all of this, what I considered billing fraud, and there's a whole lot more, I just don't want to bore you with all the details. But what I determined was, is I called TXU. I, Paris Rigby, picked up the phone and called TXU after I'd spent with Michelle probably six months, maybe seven months, 
24-7 working on this entire situation. And every day we were baffled. When I go up to my unit on the 19th floor at that time, um, I moved the 9th to 19th floor at that time, um, baffled by the situation, baffled by that nobody, nobody cared. Everybody we called about the fraud, whether it be Chase Bank, whether it be whoever, they didn't care. So we called TXU. And a gentleman by the name of Tommy Coleman answered the phone, or I was either, he, I was probably sent to him. He was evidently the assistant to the president of TXU. Tommy Coleman, I explained to him exactly in detail, much more detail of what I've explained to you today, what was going on and what I'd uncovered. He told me that I could go to the downtown Dallas TXU building and bring my driver's license because I need my driver's license to get in. And I could bring and leave all the evidence on the top floor on the desk. And I explained to him, that's not the way it works. I want to sit down with you and explain to you what is happening. And he got very um, testy with me on the phone. At that moment, I just, I was sensing in my gut, something's not right here. Little did I know what I'm about to tell you, but I stopped, either I changed my phone number or I stopped answering his call. Because after he got testy with me, I was like, you know what? No. If I was working for a company, whether I was the president, whether I was a shareholder or an investor or even just an employee, I feel like it is my judiciary duty as, an, as a citizen of the United States working for a company that if, you, if somebody calls and they report fraud on any level, even the smallest amount, it is up to you to take care of that. And his role being supposedly assistant to the VP or the president of the TXU, I felt like that was his role. I also felt like that, that he became very, um, he might have a, a, he might, and I say might, he might have a play in this situation because his testiness with me and his unwillingness to work with me. So like I said, I quit answering the phone. At that time, I just was working on other stuff, having to do this room full of evidence and the demise of my life and the complete strategy by a, gun, a bunch of thugs that were working to ruin me for no reason, no apparent reason. However, my father emailed me and I have the email. And because Tommy Coleman was dying to get a hold of me when I stopped answering his calls. When he wasn't gonna meet with me, I said, you know what, no problem. It doesn't work that way. So my father messaged, emailed me and my father said, Paris, this Tommy Coleman at TXU is dying to get a hold of you. I don't know what's going on. And I have the email still. So Tommy Coleman, my father's email address, my father's name has mysteriously appeared on other bills and in my father's address, but my father's name was never tied to my TXU bill, ever. Not from day one of me living on my own after post-divorce to the present, ever. So I found it a little um, odd that Tommy was dying to get a hold of me, which showed me, or at least I told myself, he's more guilty than what I think. You know, freedom of speech, what I thought. So I reached back out to Tommy and there's an exchange of emails here. Nothing ever panned in anything except for I and Michelle and I got really smart and we started doing some deep dives into TXU.com. So TXU.com is also known by Energy Future Holdings. TXU, um, let me just back that up for a second. Michelle did amazing research. That's how we discovered the illegal or what appear to be illegal transactions on the U.S. Stock Exchange, the oil rig by Shell Rios, the Michelle did some incredible deep diving. In her deep diving with Tommy Coleman, there was something that came up. Now, whether this is the same Tommy Coleman or not, I don't know, but it kind of, you know, I never met the guy, but it kind of adds up. There's an email here about a Tommy Coleman who was an ex, um, he was uh, evidently worked in, with politicians. I don't know if this is the same Tommy Coleman or not because I never got the decency of having a face-to-face -face with this Tommy Coleman and asking him. But that evidently worked for as an undercover and he evidently um, framed a bunch of people on some drug busts and those drug busts ended up being um, not accurate. They, he was framing people that were innocent. Hello, that's what happened to me. Framing people that were innocent. Now this is the same Tommy Coleman. It's all right here. And he ended up losing his license. He was framing people for drugs at the time, if it's the same Tommy Coleman, which Michelle's pretty good at her research, so I have it right here, and it was all in North America. If it's not the same Tommy Coleman, then you know what, I, excuse me, um, but you can find that, actually you can find that article, 
if you're so inclined to look it up, it's called Tom Coleman is Not the Biggest Racist in America. And it was found on from D Magazine in April of 2005. You can find it probably on the Bing server, B is in boy, I is in igloo, N is in Nancy, G is in girl, dot com, because they archive things. May not be the same Tommy Coleman, but based on what I've experienced, you never know. Wait till we get finished. From that point forward, Tommy Coleman, I started doing research because to me, even an, an hourly employee, and I don't know if Tommy was hourly or if he was salary, but I started doing research like crazy on Tommy Coleman. Wow, Tommy, I can't decide if you or Cheryl Rios or John Wiley Price had more phone numbers. I mean, I've had a lot of phone numbers only because I was targeted and attacked, bullied, harassed, stopped. Amazing, I'm still here and poisoned. However, I started doing trace routes. Michelle and I started doing trace route after trace route after trace route on TXU.com, EnergyFutureHoldings.com, Energy Future Holdings, as well as the multitude of other people that are involved with Tommy Coleman, such as EFH.com, E.F.Howington Company, Howington Properties, Ezra, E Z R A F, Howington which is a suspect of the situation. Um, Ezra F. Howington III. Remember, a lot of these suspects have alias names and alias middle names. Jay Smith, Smith Real Estate, to just name a few. And I started, we started doing extensive research because his attitude towards me was like weird. But his needing to get a hold of me to figure out what I knew and thinking that he, I took it as he was trying to bully me. Leave the evidence there and I'll, I'll look at it. No, it doesn't work that way. So with that being said, Tommy Coleman seems to have addresses in Atlanta, Georgia. He's got phone numbers, everything from 404 to 303 to 1373 to 972-507-9748. With that, we started doing trace routes on TXU.com, determining the IP address that belonged to TXU.com, when it had changed servers. We had done all kinds of open source information. And for Energy Future Holdings, EFH.com, and the wonderful Howington Companies. You'd be surprised at what we discovered. The DNS servers changed over time. Um, TXU being a really big company, I would think that they would have a bigger bandwidth than just two DNS servers. But in 2016, it was just two. Um, we did we did multitudes of trace routes. He also then 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 the um, the number changed to 800-333-7680. Well, as you will learn, that number belongs to Web.com. And this whole demise of everything that's happened to me, Parrish Rigby. And the web of IP addresses, the web of domains, the first one at the very top is two cows, T-U-C-O-W-S dot com. Underneath that, as I previously stated, you may not have caught it, is web dot com or website pros dot com. Within that, both John Wally Price and his companies, Shell Rios, one of the attorneys, as you will learn, for the Dallas CAN, and it's on the board member, a board member, utilize the same address that web.com does. And remember, Website Pros and web.com had David Brown, the attorney for the Dallas CAN, uh, uh, Kevin Carney, all were investing into web.com. You will also learn something else about web.com. My father's domain. When my father had his business, what I can prove, Shell Rios, was part of the hacking of that database. However, what I can also prove is that my father's domain switched servers. It switched from who he had it to, to web.com as well. And the IP address matches, and we'll get to that. So it made me think that, oh, by the way, I know my database was stolen and I know I was targeted. But my database was clearly stolen for more reasons than one. And one of them, I guess, was to determine or to build up this company, web.com, webprosinc.com. Because then they could have people like GoDaddy and Network Solutions have, I mean, it was like they, these criminals did not leave a dollar on the table, in my opinion. It is 
disgusting what they have done and the levels they've gone to. So back to what we were doing is we were doing domain, we were doing searches all the time and we were doing like on everything. So Saturday, April 13th of 2014, web.com actually held TXU and TalkCom and Energy Future Holdings, which were previously with GoDaddy or Net and Network Solutions. Then we go to the Ezra F. Howington. She owns a real estate company. This same year, a gentleman, I call him a parachute man, but he actually came down from Oklahoma, supposedly the Oklahoma FBI, to because we were discouraged. At this point, I was five years into this hell and daily abuse. And Michelle was only about maybe nine months into it. However, he came down and met with us and we met at the Ritz and it was a big, I mean, it was like, it was traumatizing to say the least. He looked at Michelle and I and said, this all has to do with real estate. And I looked at him and I said, you know what? I don't own any real estate. I don't own anything at this point because everything has been taken from me or stolen or sabotaged or, I mean, it's, it was horrible what was happening. Well, this Howington Properties out of Atlanta, Georgia, which I can say now that this crime ring is involved in Atlanta, Georgia, California, you may want to think twice when you order a pizza and you put it on my account, and Florida, as well as Texas and Oklahoma. So Tommy Coleman is, is tied to that, and this woman evidently has her own real estate company. And let me get her. So she goes by, she's also a CPA. Now, TXU.com originally was run through a server in Dallas, Texas. This server, for many years, from 2011 to 2015, I did geo-tracking. My deceased friend, Tim Vasquez, taught me how to do geo-tracking on everything, every IP and everything. That's how we were able to determine that everybody from the 60 suspects over there to my father's company, to every email address I set up, to everything, anybody that was next to me or associated with me, everybody's stuff was running to the same geo-tracking. Well, guess what? For years, I kept all of those screenshots of the same location. However, I didn't go to that location because I was too afraid. 2017, my friend, Angela, I won't say her last name for security reasons, who is a one of the prime for, uh, artists for the Lorenzo Hotel, was at the Lorenzo Hotel after we did the second opening. Well, guess who was there? John Wiley Price's assistant. I don't know her name because I wasn't there. But she told my friend Angela, and I recorded the conversation on one of my phones. Sorry, Angela, but you know what? You didn't know that you were, you thought you were telling me about somebody complimenting you in your art. You didn't know that you were putting a smoking gun right into my lap. And I, she told, it's Lorenzo Hotel, if you knew the Lorenzo Hotel prior to, it was a functioning hotel. Then it went for years being like nothing was there. Everything was like rampant, like it was just a beaten down hotel. Well, from that, Angela is an amazing, wicked, talented, incredible photographer. Angela started taking photographs at the Lorenzo Hotel way before anything was done. It was just a debilitated, like, I mean, just look like crap. But her photography was so wicked talented, it was incredible. And a lot of that art is displayed today at the Lorenzo Hotel. So when John Wally Price's assistant and her friend came to the Lorenzo Hotel, they were excited to meet my friend Angela. And my friend Angela, who has, is wicked talented and very smart, she, as we all, have insecurities. So she was sharing with me about how proud she was that somebody came and complimented her on her art. Evidently, John Wally Price's assistant has a golden key, or I call it a magical key, to a server in the Lee Harvey Oswald building. This building is evidently run down, de like, de cap like nothing there, like kind of like the Lorenzo Hotel was prior to it being what it is today before Larry Hamilton got in there and got all his, his information, you know, got everything built up and all this. So she was offering Angela the ability to go in there and take photographs. She said, quote unquote, according to Angela, and I do trust Angela, I've known her for 20 years, that, that she could come over there and take pictures of that building and because it was, you know, because she'd never seen photographs and art. And evidently, John Molly Price's assistant is very big into art. I don't know that. I don't know John Molly Price or his assistant, but very big into art.
And therefore, she has, and then her friend chimed in that she's got a magic, you know, there's a server over there, and it's a Google server, and that, oh, by the way, that server, and but the, the building was de, 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 packed, like just demolished, pretty much. And nobody knew that was there. Well, I was proud for Angela, because Angela can take a piece of, de, like, crap building that's, like, you know, probably animals live in, stray animals live in, and turn it into a magical piece of art that can turn up on like Vogue magazine, for real. She's that wicked talented. So I didn't say anything to Angela, but I also, a couple of years later when Angela was living with me during the beginning of COVID, I re-brought up that conversation just to make sure I heard what I heard. And Angela reassured me that yes, that's what I heard. Angela did not know that I was, in my mind, I was going, oh my God, this must be a God thing. Because I knew about this particular geo-tracking for many, many years. But I couldn't figure out what it was. Never did I think that the city of Dallas had a server. Kind of like you know Hillary Clinton did in the 2016 elections when they found it in the Colorado bathroom. It never dawned on me. So as you will learn through this podcast, there are every, almost every domain that is part of this situation runs through that magical server and web.com. Well, it makes total sense to me as TXU was running TXU.com and all that was running through there and then through the web.com, which clearly explains how my father's IP address for thermoserve.com is it my father's or my father's company? I've got what was, I wrote them all down. It would, they changed the same IP address as my, um, as johnwallyprice.com. In 2013, mm, mm, mm. I tried to explain that to my father, but rightfully so, and not for him. I mean, I was trying to explain what's happening to him, but my father runs a company and he was not, I mean, it's hard for a lot of people to understand this. But when Susan Hawk ran for DA in 2016, and Susan Hawk being a friend of mine and a victim of the situation, I sat down with she and George Milner on a Saturday and I explained to them at that time that the Susan Hawk for DA.com was not only being, re, it was either being redirected through what's called forward with masking, but it was running through that same server. And I said, it's, and when people were going to Susan Hawk for DA.com, it was redirecting up to Google over. And I explained all of that to her. So, I can tell you probably a hundred different people and their domains that everything was all of a sudden running through this server, including the Dallas Police Department. The Dallas Police Department was logged into my Facebook page in 2013 and Robin, Robin Ross Peterson Townley's, Townsley's Facebook page until they changed their um, servers and everything, I believe in 2014. But I mean, I was a little shocked too, yes. And Tim Vasquez, some of his logins and illegal logins went through there. So, that's where we stand with that. If you want to know more about how to take an IP address or take your domain, if you want to know if your domain, maybe your domain is um, bestofficer.com, then you go to viewdns.info I believe that's the domain, or you can go to any open source website and you can type in your domain in a, in a, in a IP for IPv4, which will be like 23.19.110.245, whatever that looks like, will pop up. You can take that and you can put it into a trace route. You can take that and you can put it into the servers and you can determine because my friend Frank Parlato, you know, who took down the next same sex cult and people in federal prison right now for in the summer of 2021, he had problems with his domain. Somebody had hacked it. And I was able to track it down to it had changed servers and all this stuff, which is exactly what I found from the original dat the original evidence that I had from 2011 to 13, it started changing. It was going through GoDaddy Network Solutions, but everything was going through that magical server. But then it's all of a sudden going to web.com. God. You know, I don't know what, what, if you call that insider trading, if you call that cheating, if you call that being a scumbag, I don't know. But all I know is that these idiots, thugs, didn't leave a dollar on the table at all. Now, let's get down to my next point. One thing I haven't talked about on this podcast is the mail fraud and the package fraud. We're going to get to that. And it's pretty interesting. I, at the time, was ordering packages just to watch them travel and make better trips than I've ever had. However, I found something interesting. There is an address in Coppell. And that address, when you are a TXU customer, 
you get these credit cards in the mail saying, oh, you're such a good customer. You know, I was a good customer because I was paying three and four and $500 a month on my electric bill for an 800 square foot apartment. So I was getting these little, like, oh, we'll give you $97, we give you $70, whatever. And at that time, by the time I started getting those and actually paying attention to them, I started paying attention to the addresses and keeping track of every address. That's how I was able to track web.com, John, John Molly Price, one of his companies, and um, a couple of other things to an address. But we'll get back to this one. There's a magical address in Coppell. And this address, it didn't matter if I, because I used to send birthday cards and thank you notes to everybody handwritten. I was very good about that because I believe that nobody's entitled and it doesn't matter. And it means something to somebody when they get something in the mail, the physical mail, as opposed to like an email or a post on Facebook or some social media. And I was very, very good at that. I spent more money probably on stamps and stationery than I did anything else because it meant something to me to be able to send somebody something saying my gratitude for them or happy birthday or I'm thinking of you or I'm sorry, whatever, you know, they had a death in their family. But one thing that I started tracking was the ASN numbers. Mm-hmm. Well, that'll be real good on our next podcast. However, I started noticing that if I sent a, a letter to somebody in Dallas, from Dallas to Dallas, or Dallas to Plano, or Dallas to Richardson, or Dallas to Fort Worth, or Dallas to anywhere, guess what? It didn't matter. Everything went through this magical IP, or this magical PO box slash clash address that everything in Coppell, Texas. And those TXU cards that I started getting, oh yeah, they had the same address. So being the, um, I don't know what you'd call it, the lucky resident of 1400 Highline slash Amway Design District, you know, I did a video on this. However, I had um, many neighbors, such as Rob O'Neill, the guy that kills Osama Bin Laden, Richard Rawlings from Fast and Loud. But guess what? One of my other neighbors was Ron and Yvonne Stretcher. Ron Stretcher worked with John Wally Price. He worked with John Wally Price, and I believe, if I remember correctly, because I remember over the year, we were standing next to the mailboxes down down, downstairs in the lobby, and he told me that when the FBI indicted John Wally Price, and I believe, now don't quote me on the year, 2013, but my years have kind of gotten mixed up, that he was called in to be interviewed by the FBI because he was the former, he was retired when I spoke to him, but the former, I believe, assistant to John Wiley Price. When he was, they obviously brought him in to go, what do you know, yada, yada, yada. But regardless, I found it very interesting that not too many weeks later after that conversation, I was in the swimming pool at 1400 Highline. Yvonne Stretcher, who I like both of them a lot, they live in Oak Cliff right now, they're great people, but they told me that their electric bills were like, and don't quote me exactly on the, on the amount, but like $10 or $7. And Yvonne, I got to give her credit because I do believe that Yvonne did this, but I didn't see her do this, but she told me she did. She was surprised their electric bills were so low. She said she went up to the TXU office and said, no, what's my real, what's my real like bill? Because she felt guilty for the fact that they were only paying a small amount. Then there's Paris Rigby, who is paying two, three, four, five hundred dollars $500 a month. So I would ask investigators, to determine everybody in John Wally Price's circle, whether that be his colleagues, his minions, his cromies, his next door neighbors, whatever. I don't know what that looks like. Maybe that assistant that was so proud of the magical key that she had to the Google server at the Lee Harvey Oswald building. And determine, does everybody get a JWP, what seems to be a JWP like price for TXU? Because you know, it was running through the, the magical server and then web.com. I think that would be interesting. Also, I'm going to move past. I'm going to talk about John Wally Price's, um, johnwallyprice.com originally was not running through web.com. The first time that I ever did a screenshot on the whole the DNS servers and everything it was running through, I believe, and don't quote me on this because it's not in front of me, Network Solutions and probably maybe GoDaddy, which both of those were hacked. But something that I found interesting when I did my, um, extensive research in 2016. It was running through, oh, this is good. This is really good. So this is, so it was running through web.com, websiteprosinc.com. And when it was, guess what? I know we're all law enforcement and fire department and first responders supporters, because I'm a huge supporter. 
But I have heard many times over the years, and in fact, from one of their founding partners, which I truly trust, that guns and hoses, the founders were not that ethical. And what was going on with that money, and they couldn't believe that there wasn't a any kind of um, audit going on. But I don't know, that's just third person. But I can say that guns and hoses, North Texas.com, that they had their, um, their registrant organization is Dritcher Homes. And guess who that belongs to? That belongs to the, the hum Howington Homes, the Esri, who's with Tommy Coleman. Also, they came out of this address, 12808 Grand Bay Parkway West, Jacksonville, Florida. 32258. So that also is the home of not only Detzler Homes, but it's also the home of one of John Wiley Price's, a company that's related to John Wiley Price called Private, Perfect Privacy LLC, as well as web.com, as well as the address for any of the U.S. stock exchange that were done, the stock exchanges that were done on the U.S. Stock, United States Stock Exchange. Um, for Web Pros Inc. or Web.com. Under David L. Brown, which I know David Brown, our former chief of police, he didn't go by the middle name L. However, everybody from Stephanie Pointer to Shell Rios to um, John Molly Price's alias names to everybody's situation, they all use multitude of middle names. So nothing again, I'm a total police and fireman and first responder supporter. But I think it needs to be looked in. Is that David Brown, our chief of police? Because that would make sense as to why my, my police reports and everything were just filed in miscellaneous. And one of my officers that worked for me for over 10 years was told to put his hands down and not do anything. Larry Bankston. So with that being said, when I found out, when I discovered that Guns and Hoses North Texas, their domain, was coming through the same address and the same domain, it's kind of interesting to me. Well, we also have Charles Powell, which Charles Powell, it, you, you don't know this, the phone number called Michelle's phone, and that phone number I mentioned earlier in the podcast that I was able to, to, to put to an IP address, able to put to Charles Powell, which is one of our, one of the three check fraud schemes that went on, national check fraud schemes, which I was able to determine with the uh, Lost Claims Association to the Department of Justice. Well, that is also the same, that is related to the johnwallyprice.com. And Stable Transit is the DNS server, or the referral server, the referral URL. URL. When we talk about a referral URL, we're talking about when you put, you can do the either forth masking or you can do a referral URL, which is basically the same thing, which was the DNS. Well, last week, or two weeks ago, when I was at Deandra Simmons' house, and I looked up her Instagram account because I mentioned to you on the previous podcast that she had problems with her likes and her, and it was causing her monetary problems because she wasn't getting 3% of her, um, like, she wasn't getting 3% of the audience looking at it, so therefore an, a sponsor wouldn't pick her up. Well, guess what? There was a domain in the back end of her Instagram as well as the other woman that I met with I didn't even meet with, I don't even know, but I helped when she had her siphon and ransom for $100. It was called balloonrace.com. Stable Transit is the DNS server. That belongs to that magical server in the Lee Harvey Oswald building. That also was part of johnwallyprice.com. And Perfect Privacy LLC. And it's all right here. And I could compare the IP addresses, but I'm not gonna do that for you right now because it probably won't make sense. But I'm wanting to know, anybody else on the JWP plan? Because it seems to be that you are on a, I mean, here I am not only being psychologically warfared, stalked on person in line, money laundering, financial fraud, car tampering, animal abuse, violent home invasions, and oh, by the way, my bills are incredible. My father's company, which, you know, they managed to destroy my father as well. They, I mean, my father's company with, I mean, I can prove Shell Rios was in it. And then my father knew nothing about web.com and Thermo sir, because I've been doing tracking on my dad's d domain for many years prior to this happening. And you know what? Because I love my father, I care about my family and I take care of my family and friends. And they may not understand what it looks like when you have a domain. They may think that having a domain and a website means, oh, you're good, you're gonna make money. Well, I'm always interested as to what's really going on, especially after everything I've been through.
So I can prove that it was changed to web.com. And, you know, that seems to be where a lot of things are going. With that being said, I told you about Drexler Homes, which that I called the parachute man, told me about the um, real estate company. And there's multiple real estate companies that this woman was involved with. I, I, Howington Properties, which was EFH.com, which is also Ezra H.F. Howington Jr. And they went through so many aliases and there's so many phone numbers. But I will say this, on the U.S. Stock Exchange, I have mentioned before about um, uh, Kevin Carney and his name. And I always thought that was Shell Rios' alias name because that particular name not only invested twice that I found on the U.S. Stock Exchange for Website Pros Inc. and Web.com, it also invested, it's an investor for Shell Rios, Reyes and her 2015 Ulrich. It is now, based on further research, my belief that that is an alias name for John Wally Price. I could be wrong, but I think I'm right. There's also a woman named Ro Roseanne Duran. She's also an investor for Website Pros, Inc. The same magic, oh, oh, there's two magical addresses in Florida. The 12808 Grand Bay Parkway West, Flor Jacksonville, Florida 32258. There's another one that I am just now discovering. I discovered this in 2016, but I was too ill with arsenic poisoning because, you know, they tried to kill me a few times. There's a 12735 Grand Bay Parkway West, Building 200. So they're both on the same street, but those are two addresses that definitely need to be looked into as far as what's really going on there. There seems to be companies from the, from our John Molly Price. There are, um, let's see, it would seem to be alias names, investors on oil rigs, um, all kinds of things. And I don't know if you consider this insider trading, fraud, you name it. Um, also, Atlanta, Georgia, 130 West W-I-E-U-C-A Road, Suite 105, Atlanta, Georgia, 30342. That's Howington, remember, Ezra Howington Properties, Atlanta, Georgia, which is part of TXU, which is part of EnergyFutureHoldings.com, EFH.com, which is part of Tommy Holman, which is also part of 972-507-9748. And it's Howington Real Estate Broker. Well, let me get to another aspect of this. My father. So my father's domain, Thermoserve, was his company. Thermoserve.com, I told you, went from Thermos from, went from GoDaddy to this web.com and it, it was changing exchanging the same IP address with John Wally Price at one point. Well, over the years, there were many things that I received. I received threatening phone calls. I received phone calls that made me so scared that I went into complete shock in 2013. And I also received text messages about my computer in Spanish. I'm not prejudiced. I love every race and religion and person. I just don't like criminals. Um, the IP address 97.79.251.210 was this mysterious Spanish login on one of my Gmail accounts. It also was found in Michelle's computer on April 26 of 2016. It came from Time Warner Cable, and that's a whole different ball game because I got the employee that works there and I know what he's doing. However, that also resonated with my father's IP address at Thermoserve. And this also tied to, and my father never has I've asked my father, the address 13820. Sunrise Valley Drive, Herndon, Virginia, 20171, which is part of TXU, which is part of Ezra, Howington Properties, which is part of the Spanish logins on my emails and the text messages that I would receive in Spanish, and is also now part of my father's domain. So you tell me that there wasn't billing fraud and there wasn't things going on with TXU. So let me tell you about somebody that you may or may not know. It's Angel Reyes. He has a very good law firm here in Dallas. And if you remember from episode one, season one, I got not episode one, but season one of the Real Housewives of Dallas, and Lee and Locken threatened to kill Maria Reyes on TV 
And even if you didn't know Leanne and her diabolical self and how, much, how crazy she is, and you saw the reaction, which I believe was authentic, on the castmates, but like as a viewer, knowing her diabolical self, she threatened to kill Maria Reyes. Well, Angel Reyes, you're on my Facebook page. We don't know, we've probably met the Condices over the years. However, I don't know if you know this, but your company, ReyesLaw.com, is also running through web.com. So same address, 12800, 12808, everything. Now I will say this because I, it is my understanding, and I don't know you that well, however, it's my understanding that you do a really good business. You are a very successful attorney and law practice. So that would only lead me to believe that you are a victim of the situation because the more successful you are, the more that you become a victim of this scenario. But if you would like to contact me, you're welcome to. And I'm sorry about your wife. I love Maria. But actually on um, Saturday, April 13th of 2014, that's when your, your domain, ReyesLaw.com, was running through web.com. With that being said, John Wally Price is involved with a mystery server in downtown Dallas that probably no one knew about, like no one knew about Hillary Clinton's server in the Colorado bathroom, that I had been tracking that geo-tracking for years. He's also involved clearly with the manipulation of TXU bills. Because you know I'm telling the truth, or otherwise my bills wouldn't be two and three and four and five hundred dollars a month. You know? I've been stripped of everything, and so is my father. So of many other people. And wait till next week and I tie it all together. So in closing, almost closing, I would like for somebody to do an audit on Tommy Coleman's bank accounts and this Ezra Howington and all the other people that I've mentioned. Because I can promise you, they're, I, I mean, we haven't gotten to Wells Fargo yet. But I can bet you that you can start there. You know, just like Chase Bank told me, which I'll expose them to. The IP address you logged in with on your phone is the IP address that's checking your, your account. However, I would love for somebody to do an audit. It would be interesting. So I'm going to go with, over the years, as I've said, I was stopped in person. I was followed in illegally surveillance with drones, with cars, to the point where I was grabbing my phone and like going like this. And I didn't care if somebody shot me or not because I had a gun pulled on me twice, once in 2014 and once in 2016. However, I got to the point where I didn't care anymore. You already tried to kill me with arsenic and removing my belt in my car and God knows what else, like psychological warfare. So by the time that we got to this, there was somebody, I was being followed by many cars. In 2014, when I moved out of my apartment at 2820 McKinnon, it was like a circus. Dell Coleman Gray, Charlie Gray. Now Coleman, is that related to Tommy Coleman? I don't know. But what I can tell you is that the license plate, B as in boy, M as in Mary, the number five, eight, six, four, nine, was sitting outside my place at 2820 McKinnon when I moved. That license plate followed my mother and I to the storage facility in which I had to put my belongings. It also followed us, but then there was a Jeep that was set there and I got their license plate, but we're not gonna go there. Then when we left the uptown storage, it followed us to my parents' house. Well, at that time, it was spring of 2014. And I wasn't poisoned with arsenic yet. I was just really pissed. Like, what the hell, excuse my language, is going on? Why am I being targeted? And at that time, I didn't realize that I was completely in shock and traumatized. Little did I know that I was going to deal with much more deeper layers of trauma and traumatized, traumatization and theft and everything else. So from that license plate, I was able to pull up Del Coleman Gray. Del Coleman Gray belonged to that license plate. Well, then at that time, I had, I believe as a PI or somebody told me to go on Facebook and start searching by names. And I did. And the, uh, there was a mutual friend between Del Coleman Gray, myself, my old Facebook pages, and this Rebecca Hickley, H-I-C-K-L-E-Y. And that mutual friend was Charlie Gray. Well, 
Rebecca Hickley was an alias name that was used. I was able to go on to Facebook and realized that that license plate that I read you belonged to a red pickup truck. It did not belong to the four-door sedan that was following us. So when I went on Facebook and I went through the mutual friends, the license plate, the whole shebang, and I got to Rebecca Hickley and the, the, the one mutual friend was Charlie Gray. Uh, you know that profile picture that you make at the top, which is like your, I guess your major picture or whatever? At the top was a red pickup truck with Del Common Gray and Charlie Gray sitting in the back of it. And guess what? That's what that license plate belonged to. So they had switched the license plate from the red pickup truck to the four-door sedan. And Charlie Gray worked for a car dealership here in Dallas. At one point along my way when I was really pissed that summer, I actually posted all this and put it on my Parrish Rigby Cybersecurity. I'm not sure who saw it or who didn't because, you know, what I figured out is everybody in Dallas when it comes to law enforcement was told to like put their hands down and not do anything because the corruption, the blackmail, and the level of we're not going to do anything, I don't know why, was pretty bad. I just, you know, was still a believer. I still am. However, at that moment, I realized that that red license, that, that red truck, I saw a picture and I have a picture of that red truck. And Charlie Gray, I want to know how many cars you took license plates from, from that dealership you worked for, because I know the dealership. And Dale Coleman Gray, are you related to Tommy Coleman? I don't know. I just found it. It stuck out in my head. So that's all for today. Next week, we're going to talk about how all this ties to AT&T. Kathy Ortega, the mail fraud, that magical Allen, or that magical Coppell address, and the Dallas Can. Because the Dallas Can and Richard Marquez and Cheryl Rios, they act like they are God-fearing individuals. But I can tell you, I didn't want to acknowledge that Richard Marquez was a criminal. But it is of my opinion, freedom of speech, that he's a bigger criminal than what I expected. Thought, California.net, and all the other things that he's tied to with, with Mauricio Nirvana. And probably I didn't say your name right, but I was standing there, Mauricio, when you were at the Dal you were at the St. Patrick's Day Parade in 2014 and you threatened that liquor cart, that liquor company, that if they didn't keep their liquor company open during the St. Patrick's Day Parade, then you were going to fine them $10,000. And I was standing there and I got his name and I got, all, I got an affidavit and everything like that. So next time we're going to move more into the Dallas, how Dallas City is involved in all this. Because, you know, I had an alarm system in my 2820 McKinnon. I moved out in April. And oh, by the way, I was still being fined. I was still being fined for alarm systems that were going off that, that were not, that there was no alarm in the place. And I can't wait to expose all that. Was that to ruin my credit? To cause me psychological harm? Because I am a responsible person outside of trying to keep up with these criminals. Just wait and see. It only gets better. Until then, we'll see you next time. But I want to say this. Thank you to all the men and women in blue, the men and women that are in law enforcement at every bureau and every branch, whether you're a CIA, or another acronym, police, whatever. Thank you, because at any level, you are still putting your life on the line. And I think the more that we have technology, the more that we have anything with social media, your life is being put on the line because there are, there are people from different levels that are creating bigger crimes. And always to Domingo Rivera. He deserves the Officer of the Century Award. That man has put more time and hours and compassion into believing in me and letting me get my story out so that one day I can have a life again and not have to live in fear. And all the men and women that are in the military, those that don't understand, those that are learning the new realm of history, don't get that we are free or everybody's free. I'm not. I mean, I'm a prisoner to this situation. I've been for 12 years, but people in the United States of America, and the beautiful thing about it is that you have the ability to do what you want as long as you abide within the lines, and that's because you fought on the line. So thank you, and I appreciate you. And those that walked in the carry the load this past Memorial Day weekend, there's a lot to be said about that, and I appreciate that. I'm still a supporter, and I always will be. Until next time, episode nine, let's dive into the Dallas City Council and the city of Dallas. And all those criminals, because I'm going to just let, let every single person by their name and how they're involved. I have nothing to hide. Until then, we'll see you then.